Susie Homesteader of the Rockies and welcome to the Susie Homesteader channel and today we're going to talk about building and we're going to talk about remodeling a uh, part of your house or a building or a room. Uh, now there's a huge difference between new construction and remodeling and anybody that's a carpenter or in the remodeling business knows that actually remodeling is sometimes a bigger challenge because we're still working with what's already existing. So it kind of changes the order of how you do things. Um, and the phases that you go through based on what you already have there. And basically what I'm going to do is walk you through a step-by-step -step, uh, 400 square foot room that is a porch that's going to be converted into a full Four Seasons fully enclosed dining room. So with the 400, squ 400 square feet that we have to work with, um, we'll go through different phases. And, uh, you know, there's a couple of different ways to start this and of course most of that depends on how much of that you're going to do by yourself. So in my case I'll be doing most of the carpentry because that's what I do. Uh, you know but if you're concerned about getting other things done like plumbing or electric uh, or insulating or things that might actually be easier and cheaper uh, for you to have somebody come in and do uh, than trying to do yourself then you're going to probably want to hire a few people. And then of course if you're within city limits and you have certain codes that you have to follow um, then you definitely have to hire some licensed and insured uh, contractors. So, of course, one of the first things you might want to consider doing is just hiring a, co a consultant or just talking to somebody that you know that may have already done something like this um, in a remodel or new construction. So if that's just maybe somebody in your family circle or in your friend circle, um, just talk to anybody and as much people as you can about what you have planned uh, because somebody always gives you information that somebody else did not. So that goes along with getting bids and quotes also. So if you, uh, you know, hire or, you know, have one electrician come up, have two or three come up because every single one of those electricians is going to give you different information uh, because they all like to do it differently other than some of the codes that they have to follow. Uh, so my advice is if you are going to hire a consultant or an electrician or a plumber or a carpenter or somebody to do your flooring or somebody that does insulation or uh, even maybe a interior designer if you're that uh, creatively challenged, <laughs> uh, get at least two or more uh, opinions on each one of those. Um, and it, again, as I said, it is amazing how many different, uh, how much different information you'll get from each one of those people. Uh, but that's good to have because that helps you make your decisions on how you want to get things done. And it, it should be up to you on how you want things exactly done, give or take a few things that you may not have a choice on. So again, we'll go through uh, just this remodel in phases. And like I said, generally those phases follow new construction as well. It just kind of depends on what you're working with. So in my case, <clears throat> I'm gonna try and do as much of this as I can myself. Um, and of course that should drop my costs about 50% of what it's gonna be if I hire somebody or hire several people to do all of it for me. So in my case, uh, you know, this should cost me about seven or eight thousand dollars in materials uh, and just a few uh, people that I have to hire uh, in labor, which is going to be, I will have to hire an electrician. I don't have any plumbing in this particular remodel. Uh, and I think I might go with hiring somebody to just blow some insulation into my ceiling. So very little costs on labor. Uh, if I chose to hire somebody to do every phase of this for me, I could be doubling that number at least. So my seven, eight thousand dollar project could turn into a fourteen, fifteen, sixteen thousand dollar project easy uh, just to close in a four hundred square foot porch. One of the most important things I have to think of first uh, is the climate that I'm in, the sun exposure, uh, and more so just insulation. How I'm going to insulate this room and how I'm going to keep it warm. Now, depending on where you live. If you're in a four seasons climate where you have snow and rain and ice, uh, you gotta start thinking about uh, 
your heating and your cooling and your ventilation. So that starts to cover quite a few subjects and quite a few changes that you have to make um, also on the exterior of your building uh, as well as your interior. So that brings up a lot of questions that I really kind of didn't take into consideration. Um, and the first place that starts with is really, like I said, in, a, in an area where you have four uh, seasons, it's how you're going to keep that room warm. Now, if you're just in a you know warmer climate where you're, you're more concerned about keeping it cool, <clears throat> where if you're in the desert and you need air conditioning, uh, then that's another story. But in this particular case, uh, this is our my main concern here is keeping it warm, and that's going to be tough to do because, like I said, this is a porch. Um, it is attached to a house, so that helps. Um, but one of the first things we'll have to talk about is where all the heat, once I get the heat in here, is going to go. So, of course, heat rises, and this was originally, as you can see all the way down the, the line here, this was originally uh, just a hollow uh, porch roof with some soffit uh, put underneath it and no insulation in between because it was just a porch. Um, so since heat rises, uh, my biggest concern is going to be that I'm going to lose a lot of that heat out my ceiling. Uh, so what I decided to do on the insulation, which is one example uh, that you can go with, is have an insulation company come out. Uh, they drill some holes into the soffit, um, like you can see, and they just stuff it with a kind of a fiberglass formed uh, insulation as opposed to like a foam. Uh, now if you hire an insulation guy, they're going to obviously have to talk to you about a couple of your options. There's other options besides the fiberglass, uh, which is an actual foam, but a lot of time you can't use the foam if it's a completely enclosed cavity. So lots to talk about with your insulation guy. But uh, for as little as I paid to just have them come out, drill holes in my soffit every 16 inches, uh, in between every rafter or every bay, which they have to fill separately, um, that was easier than me taking off all of my beautiful cedar soffit, um, which isn't very cheap these days, uh, and trying to put bats up there myself. Um, and I probably would have destroyed my soffit doing it. it I, there's no way I would have gotten those sheets off um, in perfect shape. Anyway, so the best way to save my cedar soffit up there was just to have them come in um, and fill it, as opposed to me trying to remove all of it <coughs> and insulate it myself or insulate the exterior of it in a different way with uh, maybe, maybe some insulation boards and something else, which would have been a huge project. So for as cheap as that was, that was the easiest way to fill my cavity <coughs> underneath my porch roof. And now I don't have any problem with the holes up there because I'm just going to put some kind of a decorative ceiling uh, panel over that anyway. So that took them like a total of two hours, uh, super easy way to go um, and really not as expensive as I thought it was. So that solves my problem on insulating my, my ceiling and my roof. Now, <clears throat> before we start talking about the walls and the, and the flooring on insulation, that now creates a new problem for me uh, because I have a metal roof and my roof is now going to be even hotter in the winter time because this room will also be heated. So now, <laughs> now I have another problem because uh, my ice, my snow and my ice uh, is going to be stuck up there even worse because it's no longer, uh, it's now a heated space as opposed to a non-heated space. Um, so now I have problems with um, maybe drainage or snow or snow loads and a lot of other things because I now have a heated space on the roof. So <laughs> along with just getting that insulation up in there, I will probably now have to put up a snow guard in front of where I'm going to put some glass doors, some glass sliding doors. Um, I'll probably have to go on the top part of my metal roof and add some snow guards because the ice buildup that might start to collect up there, which we had a lot of last winter, as that snow uh, got shoveled off the porch when that ice started to melt, that ice slid right off the roof and right onto my porch. And if I had had those glass doors in here, my sliding glass doors in here, uh, it prob that ice would have slipped off and probably slid down the snow that came off first and broke my glass doors. So again, now I have some other things to consider now that I have a heated uh, space up there or an insulated space. So besides the, the metal roof guards that I'm gonna have to put in front of these doors so when the ice and the snow does melt, 
it doesn't at least slide down into my glass. Well, and I may even have to do that for the windows. Um, I am also probably going to have to put up some heat tape on the roof. And that's not to melt the snow in the wintertime, but that's to create channels so that when the snow and the ice does start to melt, it has a channel to run off of. Um, so as you're creating channels with that heat tape that you put on the roof for snow, um, now I'll also have to put out a rain gutter <laughs> because that water now has to have a place to drip um, or that snow and that ice now has to have a place to drip into. So now, as well as insulating this ceiling, as I said, I'll have to put up a snow guard over the windows and the doors on the roof and I will also have to put up a rain gutter um, to catch what's melting because if I don't do that, it's going to hit the ground and probably splash back into my doors and windows anyway. Or it could create even a bigger problem, uh, which is that if I put that heat tape up there, um, that drainage is going to start deteriorating the ground in front of my porch, which could cause an even bigger problem. And then you're going to have to come out and hire an excavating company to come out and create some kind of a French drain or something more elaborate to get that water runoff to go somewhere other than underneath your porch. So every little change you make creates a new change and a new effect, which anybody in the building industry knows. So <clears throat> that goes into a couple different things you might want to think about. And then on top of that, I now have another problem, which is uh, that I probably don't have enough ventilation on my eaves, which is not insulated. This part of the roof is not insulated because there's no reason for it to be because it's an exterior uh, eave. But um, as you can see, as that roof stays warmer on the top now, which it will, um, I'm getting mold on the soffit. And I made two mistakes, <coughs> well, actually one mistake with that, and that is that I caulked that, <coughs> as you can see, I caulked that so tightly a couple years ago because we were having problems with uh, bees getting up inside the cracks that I went through about two dozen cans of caulking <laughs> to keep the bees out. And what that did was create the problem that I now have no ventilation. And so that mold that's up there uh, is getting worse because I sealed up every possible place the air could get in. So now, on top of the other issues that I have with insulating the interior roof, I'll have to come out with this exterior eave and vent that every single bay the whole way down. So um, that's another you know, thing that will have to go into this entire addition along with just getting the interior ceiling insulated. So <clears throat> like I said, one, one change can create many changes. Uh, and then, like I said, that will uh, just cover a couple projects I have for the ceiling. So now, the second thing you're going to want to start insulating is going to be your walls, or consider how you're going to insulate that. Um, and in my case, I don't, it's really minimal framing, so I really don't have very much to insulate on these exterior walls. Um, but, of course, I'll have to get that wired first uh, before I close that up. So. That's going to be phase two after we finish figuring out how we're going to insulate everything. So back to the insulation factor here. Um, that, that helps you understand how you're going to insulate your ceiling. And the walls are easy because you can just put bats in that. Um, <clears throat> but now I have a third problem. And that's insulating the ground or insulating the bottom floor here. And because there isn't enough of a crawl space in particular under this porch, as you can see, I just have very little room down here under the porch itself. Um, I couldn't get that <coughs> insulated really from the bottom. And I was, I did have the possibility of insulating that with a spray foam because it's not a closed cavity. Um, but unfortunately, I don't have really enough room under there for those insulator guys to spray a foam as opposed to a fiberglass. So I'm not going to do that at all, but that was an option. And what I will be doing is putting kind of like uh, there's an, a flooring insulation pad that I'm going to be setting. Well, it'll be this queen, and then it'll be a, a floor insulating pad. Then it'll be the subfloor. Then it will be an underlayment. Then it will be a, a foam pad, depending on what kind of final flooring surface I'm using. So almost six layers of different materials that I may have to use on the top of this porch 
as opposed to insulating it from the bottom uh, just to keep the floor warm. So again, that covers you know, a couple different subjects. And then of course you have to take into consideration whether you're putting heaters uh, and or air conditioners uh, in this room as well. And or if you have a wood stove, which I'll also be installing. Um, so I will be doing cadet heaters and a wood stove. And in my particular case, I won't need an air conditioner. Um, so a lot to think about on your insulation, your venting, your heating and your cooling if you have to have that. And you can, you know, might want to even consider putting in ceiling fans um, <coughs> to keep your air circulating as well. Um, now in this particular model, as you can see, there is a dryer vent way, way down here that's attached to, uh, it's actually a daylight basement underneath, but there's a dryer vent coming up from the, the bottom level, the downstairs. And then I also have a uh, bathroom exhaust vent coming off another section of this porch that, that is currently uh, just going underneath the porch. Um, so in order for me to not have condensation, again, which we were talking about, or any kind of other form of moisture, where that moisture that's coming out of those vents um, is still being placed under the flooring here, um, I will at some point have to extend that. So I'll have to get to both sections under this porch here, which means I may have to rip out some more boards uh, or possibly get underneath the porch, however you gotta do it, uh, to be able to extend those vents beyond the flooring. So that's gonna have to get extended all the way out to the exterior, um, which will also have to be uh, skirted like a, a regular building. So the porch uh, exterior as well will have to have some skirting on it to insula insulate underneath the floor as well as the actual insulation that I'm putting on top of the floor. Uh, but before I do any of that, again, if you have any vents or any form of moisture coming underneath that, uh, it's got to be taken all the way out to at least the skirting uh, that will also have to be insulated uh, just to keep the air underneath your flooring warmer. And then, of course, avoiding any kind of condensation or moisture that could create mold underneath your flooring. Um, so there's more things to consider. You know, make sure you have anything vented up against the original part of the house or the original part of the porch extended all the way out. So that's something else we'll have to do. So of course with insulation, you're trying to keep the heat in and prevent any circumstances of condensation or mold building up. So if you do hire somebody to do your insulation, insulation <coughs> of any type, um, they can talk to you a lot about how the whole air exchange works. And they'll talk to you about <coughs> the whole theory about people making their houses almost too tight now to the point where they don't have ventilation and then people are having more and more mold problems. Um, so they're, they're a good resource to talk to in terms of air exchange in the building that you're working with. Um, and again, like I said, one change creates a lot of side effects. So lots to think about <coughs> and you do want to talk to possibly some professionals about that depending on what kind of room, of a room that you have. So we are on phase two of our remodel project, which talks about framing uh, and a couple different situations that I had, which may be different than yours on, on a porch remodel, uh, has to do with the fact that I had some logs uh, sitting inside these boxes here that were uh, deteriorating. Uh, so what I did have to do to actually start my entire process was wrap the logs that I had in here. Um, and that was for a couple reasons. Number one, because they were deteriorating, uh, even though they're still structurally sound enough to support the beam that I have up here uh, sitting on the posts. And then number two, also because I wanted to turn uh, this into a square uh, piece as opposed to trying to frame everything around a round log, which gets a little complicated. So basically I just took, took a round log. Um, we did have to shave off certain parts, some parts of that log uh, without compromising the structural integrity of that log uh, just to be able to wrap it in these uh, cedar boards. Um, <clears throat> anyway, this just makes it a lot easier to start my framing process, particularly if you're working with logs. So that was kind of a major component to starting my framing. That's probably not your situation, but that just gives you an idea of how you can uh, change a few things around. Uh, and then of course, the majority of your framing is going to be based on whether you're putting in doors, doorways and openings. Uh, and then of course, whether or not you're put, how many windows or the sizes of your windows that you're putting in. 
Uh, of course, also your framing has to do with where you're going to put your wiring, where how you're going to run your wiring, and then also possibly um, where you're going to set in, if you're going to set heaters in here, uh, and then any other kind of wiring, you know, that has to be taken up or taken down. Uh, now, in my case, like I said, I did have to take off some floorboards because of my deck, uh, because a lot of my wiring is going to have to get run under the floor as opposed to uh, all of my walls. So obviously we're leaving this framed every 16 inches on center uh, to run some of the wiring as well as to set our insulation bats. Uh, but like I said, some of my wiring is actually going to go underneath uh, the flooring as opposed to me tearing up some of the existing walls. So lots to think about when you're framing. Um, and then when you are doing uh, a frame in general, like a window or a door, of course you're always considering, you know, your headers, which you have to have for doors and windows. Uh, in my case, like I said, I already had this beam that is wrapped, uh, again, in some cedar. So there is a solid beam up here, which kind of constitutes a header, kind of does, kind of doesn't. Uh, so what I chose to do was just double up my framing on the top anyway. Like I said, even though I kind of have um, a solid beam running completely across these logs because that is how I built the porch. Uh, but, you know, just kind of doubling up my sides, doubling up the top, um, and then getting ready to possibly start boxing out where I'm going to set some heaters. Uh, and then your sheathing, which is an OSB board, exterior on the outside. Um, and then, of course, you want to uh, wrap that in either some tar paper or some house wrap on the exterior side. And then um, one of your other more important aspects to framing, especially when you're working with a porch or someplace where um, you have an exterior wall and you're going to have even possibly uh, uh, rain or any kind of water uh, getting brought back in against that wall. So <clears throat> as you can see down here, it was really important that I put in a sill seal, um, which you generally do on an exterior wall anyway, uh, but that that sill seal was really nice and tight and then of course a treated two by six uh, on top of that as your sole plate and then just some really heavy duty uh, torque screws i use fencing screws or you can use lag bolts or anything you have to do to keep that sole plate really really tight uh, just so that you never have to worry about water or moisture coming in through the bottom now something else i did just to kind of protect that bottom level here uh, because I have an outside porch, like I said, is I also put some flashing down here, which I did have to have custom uh, fabricated. But what that's doing, again, is really ensuring that I do not get any water underneath this exterior wall in the framing. So if you have to have some fabricated uh, into certain lengths or dimensions or where, whatever it is, it's worth doing. Um, and as you can see, that's mostly just because I have some decking on the outside of this porch as well that can uh, allow water to back up against that wall. So there's a couple different options that you might want to consider with framing. And then another aspect to your framing may include actually taking out some framing. So in my case, like I said, we're just turning a existing window into the actual doorway into this dining room. Uh, but I'll get back to this with you when I get that finished out just to kind of give you a better, better idea of how that one went. Uh, but this was basically just taking out an existing window and making sure that my header board on top of that was still nice and solid. Uh, and then turning this into a doorway uh, with which remodeling can be a little tricky, especially if you don't know where your wiring is. So that's really kind of cutting into that wall little by little. Uh, as carefully as you can so that you're not going to hit any plumbing or any wiring. So, like I said, in this case, I'll get back to you on that when it's a little bit more of a finished product uh, or when we make a little more progress on that. Uh, but there was a little bit more framing involved on, in that, mostly in terms of taking out what was there and then just making sure that uh, my 2 by 6s and my header boards were still nice and solid because those were um, part of the original uh, building. So <clears throat> a few things to think about in terms of framing. And we'll, we'll kind of try and keep things in order here in terms of phases. Number one was your insulation, insulating, heating, cooling, venting, and preventing any kind of condensation or moisture 
uh, or and or mold from um, from happening down the line. And then number two, our framing, which will be phase two. And then the next thing you'll have to do is get your wiring installed, which that'll be your phase three. And then you can't insulate any of your framing until you get your wiring in first. So some of that insulation you'll have to go back to after you get your wiring done. And then um, phase four will be your windows, installing your windows and your doors uh, from the outside. And then you can go back to possibly doing your flooring. Now, depending on how your porch is set up, um, you may, or, or your openings, which is what we'll talk about when we talk about framing a little bit more. In my particular case, because I have a big beam up here on the ceiling, uh, that gives me a very low clearance here to put in a standard 80-inch uh, door. So in my case, I will not be able to do my flooring first, which is generally how it's done, and then you set your floor, and then you set your doors on top of the flooring. In this particular case, just to give you an example, I'll have to put my doors in first because I have a, exactly an 80 inch clearance from this beam to the porch floor itself. Um, so therefore, the, I can't have any subflooring or any kind of flooring underneath that threshold or it's not gonna make it unless I have a custom door built, which I'd rather not do because then it gets expensive. So anyway, depending again on how your room uh, is already set up, it will kind of change the order of the phases that you're gonna be doing, um, which is kind of how it goes a lot of the time with a remodel. Uh, and then again, in my case, it'll be a little different because I'll be doing the ceiling paneling after that, and then uh, I'll be doing my walls last um, because it's a little different because I'm using the same kind of siding uh, that I have on this side of the house on the other uh, interior wall as well. So that, that changes things a little bit as well because I'm not doing drywall. Uh, so again, it will all kind of be based on common sense if you kind of kind of understand how um, the order of things have to go. And then of course, you know, last but not least will be trim work uh, and painting, uh, staining, and then any kind of light fixtures uh, or exterior lighting or, or outlets or anything along those lines that are going to be getting placed on the final wall. So uh, lots of different ways to do things depending on how your remodel is going to go. And uh, what we'll talk about next as soon as I get some of my wiring put in here is how uh, you have different options and the possibilities of uh, how your wiring can go. So we'll get to that video next and hopefully that gave you a pretty decent idea of how to get started uh, in terms of some of the more important factors that you have to consider uh, before you even get moving. <music>